Welcome to the 2022 Unity Beginners Course. This is episode 27, and I will talk about animations. Animations stores a set of actions of an object in a sequence. We may modify the object's properties of different time frames within the timeline. When the animation clip is played, the actions will be played automatically. That means we don't need any code to get the actions done. Let's see how to create an animation. We first have to bring up the Animation tab by clicking on Toolbar, Window, Animation, Animation. We then select the targeted object. And inside the Animation tab, you will see a button with the text create. Click on a button and we have to create a new animation clip file. Give it a name and hit save. Now we have successfully created an animation clip for this particular object. To edit the properties of the object, simply click the add property button. There is a list of properties to choose, and I will choose Transform Scale here. Click on the Add button, and the property will appear in the timeline. Now, there are different keyframes for different timestamps. I will drag the time to the 30th frame, and here I can directly modify the scale and you will see in the scene the scale of the property changes and if I drag on the timeline you will see the scale of the transform changes as well by clicking on the play button I can preview the animation and you see the scale changes and repeats if I want to edit the keyframes here, I must drag the timeline all the way back to the 30th frame. Otherwise, the properties will be messed up. By default, the animation clip will be played repeatedly. If we click on the animation file, in the inspector there will be a loop time property. We may disable looping by unchecking the loop time. There may be multiple animation clips for the same object. To switch between clips or create new clips, we may make use of the drop-down list here. So now let's look at how to control the animations. To do that, we have to bring up the animator window. Now, an animator is a component which controls the animation clips and also the behavior of different animations of an object. Inside the animator window, you will see a few blocks. These blocks represent the different states. And by default, when the animator is first initialized, it will first play the new animation that we just created. Now, I can create a new state which is empty with no animations and I can set it as the default state. So now it will play nothing and I can also make a new transition to the new animation and I can make it back as well. On the top left here you will see a parameters tab. This is a list consisting of different parameters and we can create a new parameter here there are four options, a like float, integer, boolean, and trigger. I can set a new boolean parameter called play, and I'll also set a new trigger, and I'll name it trigger. These are parameters that we use to control the animator within the code. And we can also alter the value of the parameters here as well. So right now, I have the play condition for this particular transition. So this transition will be activated when the boolean value is true. And we can simply click here to set it to true, 
and you can see it transitions to the new animation and once the animation clip is completed it will co automatically go back to the new state and since the play parameter is still true right now so it will continue to repeat and I can set it to false and when this animation clip is played it will stay in the new state now I will quickly create a new script and I'll name it animator controller so for the transitions we can set different conditions for it so now I will set a new condition and when play which is the boolean is true it will play the animation and now let's go to the code we first have to create a new reference called the animator and inside the start method I'll find it directly so animator equals to get component animator this code searches for the animator component inside the object and inside the start method I'll simply set animator.setAll this is a method that allows us to set the value of a boolean parameter and now we have to type in the name of the parameter which is play in our case we will place the value of true so now let's save the script and you go back to the editor and attach our script so now when we hit play the animation is played now if I now set the condition to trigger and if we hit play again then the animation will not be played because the boolean is false and the trigger is not triggered now what if we want to use a trigger then we simply use the animator set trigger method and again we just simply type the name of the trigger which is trigger in our case and now when we hit play the animation will be played once and it will stop so you can also use integers or float values for the animator and we can also control the exit time as well as the settings here and this is basically how we work with animations in Unity. This is episode 27 of the 2022 Unity Beginners course. I'm Yellow Flicker and I will see you in the next episode. Stay tuned.